when EML comes each year, it's um, a nice opportunity to reflect on um, my time here and uh, really contrast uh, how my practice was uh, when I was living away from here and compare those two. So I've been thinking about that a bit. Actually, I've been thinking about that for a long time because there's something about community that's very uh, powerful. Um, and so throughout the years I've uh, living here, I've changed quite a bit. Um, maybe some people don't think that's true, but <laughs> I feel like it is. <laughs> When I think about how I was before I came here, anyhow. Um, and of course, I have a long way to go. Um, but, you know, when I was a lay practitioner, I was working very hard to change and to uh, practice. Um, but here, the changes are much faster. And so I've kind of tried to think about why that is. And yesterday, Venerable Children talked about the motivation for ordination as defined in the ordination rite as going forth from home life to homelessness to practice the Dharma and become a Buddha. Sounds kind of simple. <laughs> Until you sit with it for a minute, you know. Um, and His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, has written that to attain liberation by severing the afflictions from their root, we must first rein in the attachment to the happiness of this life, which stimulates us to engage in the ten destructive paths of action. So that's a mouthful. Hmm? So to attain liberation, severing the afflictions from their root, first rein in the attachments to the happiness of this life because that the attachment to the happiest, happiness of this life is what brings forth um, um, engaging in the ten destructive actions. So for me, the most conducive circumstance to practice the Dharma and rein in the attachment to the happiness of this life is to train and live in a monastic community. It is within the community where Dharma practice moves me, touches my heart. The energy of the community has the ability to protect and transform. And I can remember um, before I met Buddhism um, much of my life, actually, I felt this empty place in my heart. And it didn't matter what I did, um, school, career, relationships, um, amassing all kinds of material things. It never touched that place, never filled that place up. Um, and so I knew somehow that there was something more than the fleeting pleasures of life interspersed with so much uh, dissatisfaction and pain. And so living with other monastics and community and following the Buddhist path is what makes life meaningful. It's what supports me in practicing and progressing. And this community of monastics has a collective energy that is a very powerful. If you get really still and tap into it, you can, you can feel it. It's quite powerful, I think. And I think it's due to all of us having the same general aspiration to practice the Dharma, of transforming our hearts, and of course, the strength of the community is the product of the work of each individual. Um, and so going in the same direction, you know, that brings some energy. Um, when I'm struggling with afflictions, I draw upon this energy to help me get back in balance. By not being judged, I have the space to work with my own mind. When someone in the community is struggling, we all apply this collective energy to support the one that's struggling. And of course, it can look many different ways, but primarily it is offering kindness and having an awareness of someone else's struggle. And this is very healing energy. And then the Vinaya forms the foundation for harmony and happiness of the community. So following the precepts frees me to put into practice the Buddha's teachings and to overcome my difficulties and confusion. 
And this works because the precepts directly address the reining in of attachment to the happiness of this life. Of course, it's hard due to habit. But I often remind myself how hard it was to live out in the world. So I could say both places are um, challenging. But living and practicing in each different place has very different outcomes, very different results. And that's something really to pay attention to and think about. Harmony in the community is highly valued here. And being in harmony doesn't mean that we don't disagree or make mistakes or miss opportunities to understand one another. It means that we're doing our best and that there is no separation within the community. It's like, whatever happens, I will work it out in the community. That I have that, you know, that I know that that's what I'll do. That's, that's where the healing comes. That's where the understanding comes. That's where the growth comes. And of course, this at first can be scary. When I first came here, my self-centered attitude was so loud, um, I had to tell myself every day, there are no enemies here, because all I saw was enemies. You know, that's what my mind was doing. And so the self-centered attitude, you know, it has a big reaction, um, of course. But to continue to stay no matter what, it turns from scary to very rewarding and satisfying over time. And it fosters trust, safety, harmony, and happiness. And that's the very thing that starts filling up this empty place here. And allows me to connect with other living beings that are going through the exact same thing. So we can really rejoice in the genius of the Buddha in setting up the monastic community, and the Vinaya, to help us to realize our vast potential, that we can make our lives meaningful to benefit others and to progress on this path to full awakening. <laughs> 